There are few animal groups on Earth that are subject to such persistent and egregious misinformation as the spiders. So pervasive are the clickbait headlines, sensationalist articles and ludicrously ill-informed videos that almost anything you read or watch about spiders online warrants a very thorough cautionary fact check. And in the presence of a single word that scaremongering reaches entirely new heights. That word is, of course, Australia. Australia has garnered itself a reputation as the home of some of the biggest and most lethal spiders the planet has to offer. A reputation that has become so widespread that the country and its eight-legged inhabitants have attained near worldwide notoriety. Many even cite the apparent surplus of huge, deadly spiders as a principal reason for their reluctance to pay a visit to the land down under. I know what it's like to be afraid of spiders, though I'd never venture to say that I was properly arachnophobic at any point in my life. Throughout most of my primary school years, they were, at the very least, a source of great unease. The sighting of a small huntsman up a tree I often climbed made me hesitant to so much as touch that tree for weeks thereafter. I can't particularly put my finger on a specific moment that sparked that fear, certainly not to the same extent as I can pinpoint the origin of my childhood aversion to centipedes. But hearing horror stories about Atrax Robustus, the Sydney funnel web, certainly played a part, as did the widespread and, needless to say, completely bogus rumour at my primary school that a common jumping spider species, Mopsus mormon, was lethally venomous. And of course being surrounded by both peers and adults that, by and large, held less than favourable views of these arachnids, served to exacerbate that fear. Somehow, I eventually overcame it. Well, maybe overcame isn't the best choice of word. There was no deliberate action on my part, no courageous decision to face that fear. At best, I'd merely attribute it to curiosity, that most wondrous aspect of the human mind, and one that many of us tragically discard in adulthood. It was curiosity that drew me to learn about the very things I feared, and a few years down the road, here I am, working with spiders in a way that would have had my childhood self staring in utter disbelief, and now eager to share my fascination for these marvellous creatures with the world. The more time I spend on the internet, the more apparent it becomes that Australian spiders are at the centre of a whirlpool of poorly informed hysteria. A textbook example of such from recent weeks was the considerable publicity centred around a prehistoric trapdoor spider whose fossils were unearthed in this country. News articles almost ubiquitously stated it to be a giant. You know how big that giant spider was? About two centimetres long. So much of what is said about Aussie spiders online is mistaken. But it seems that, ultimately, most of it boils down to two major misconceptions. Australian spiders are big, bigger than those found anywhere else in the world. And Australian spiders are dangerous, to the point that interacting with any you may encounter here is a gamble. So, let's talk about their size. Now, I'm not going to argue, for a moment, that Australia doesn't have big spiders. As someone who keeps a rather concerning amount of huntsmen in his study room, and by concerning I of course mean I don't have enough, I am greeted with the sight of my big hairy housemates multiple times a day. So yeah, huntsmen are big. You won't find much dissent from me there. With spiders this impressive, surely you'd think there'd be little need for embellishment, right? Well, apparently not, for Australians talking about the size of the last huntsman they encountered bears striking parallels to an excited fisherman who won't shut up about the one that got away. Like, I'm sorry Mr Fisherman, but unless you're Jeremy Wade, I'm not going to believe your fish was that big. Ditto for the huntsman. 
It's pretty common to hear that Australian huntsmen can span the width of a dinner plate, and some will claim they grow even larger than that. It doesn't help that practically any post involving a huntsman, irrespective of its size, will almost inevitably draw comments from Australians claiming that it is just a baby. Ignoring the fact that actual baby huntsmen barely reach the width of your fingernail, even the adults of the very largest species here, such as Typostola barbata, Beragama aurea, and Tolconia imanis, would be lucky to even come close to the often perpetrated dinner plate size, let alone exceed it. A standard dinner plate measures 25 centimetres across, while the biggest Australian huntsmen generally don't attain leg spans much larger than 16 centimetres, though occasional freak individuals may approach 20 centimetres. And of course, most Australian huntsman species don't even compare to that, with many maxing out at less than 10 centimetres across. The actual biggest spiders in Australia get very little attention compared to our huntsmen. They are, unsurprisingly, members of the family Theraphosidae, colloquially known as tarantulas. These unrivaled heavyweights of the arachnid world are the most massive spiders in practically any ecosystem they inhabit. They are widespread in Australia, but not often seen outside of captivity due to their reclusive behaviour and very limited overlap with areas of high human population. The biggest in the country currently belong to the genus Selenocosmia, though they are apparently soon to be transferred to the genus Phlogius, and as such it has become a common habit to refer to them by the latter name. Phlogius vary in size, with the larger species generally ranging from 15 to 20 centimetres, being comparable to our biggest huntsman in terms of leg span, but boasting far more substantial bulk. So they're big spiders, one could say very big, and between tarantulas and huntsmen, it could seem that Australia's reputation for being home to some of the most colossal spiders on the planet isn't all that unwarranted. But let's not jump to conclusions here. At least, not without taking a look at what the rest of the world has to offer first. Let's start with Asia, namely Southeast Asia. Just like Australia, Asia is home to a broad array of huntsman spiders. Some, like this Heteropoda lunula, are truly extraordinary. But if we're talking about size, then there's one species in Asia that has to be mentioned. Heteropoda maxima. Allegedly spanning up to 30 centimetres across, Heteropoda maxima is potentially not just the biggest huntsman, but could very well have the widest leg span of any known spider, though in terms of overall size, it is dwarfed by many tarantula species. Admittedly, I would take both of the above claims with a grain of salt as the relatively small number of images and videos that have any sense of scale would suggest that such dimensions are not the norm for the species. And its spindly, lightweight build could mean that in spite of exceeding any known Australian huntsman in leg span, it may not be quite as massive, especially given species like Beragama aurea are substantially more heavily built. So when comparing Asian and Australian huntsmen, we'll call it a tie. But tarantulas, that's where Australia falls short. Asia hosts an astonishing assortment of tarantulas against which Australia simply cannot compete, many of which are significantly bigger than most or even all of their counterparts down under. And some, namely the genus Pisilotheria, boast absolutely spectacular patterns to boot. And it's not just Asia that has Australia beat in the big spiders department. Africa too is host to both huntsmen and tarantulas. And while Africa's huntsmen are a bit of a step down in regards to size, some of the tarantulas there are enormous, exceeding any Australian tarantulas and, by extension, any Australian spiders in size. But none of the above can compete with the sheer enormity of the spiders that hail from South America. Here dwells not only the biggest spider that exists, but as far as we know, the biggest spider that has ever existed. 
Theraposa, spanning over 25 centimeters across, so actually the size of a dinner plate as opposed to the embellished estimates of Australian huntsmen, and with sheer bulk that leaves any Aussie spiders completely in the dust. Theraposa are the uncontested titans of the spider world. But it's not just Theraposa either. South America hosts several other tarantula genera that, while not quite as big as the former, still far exceed any of their Australian counterparts. And of course, don't get me started on the centipedes there. So perhaps rather shockingly given its reputation, when it comes to the size of its eight-legged denizens, Australia isn't all that remarkable. In fact, our spiders sit pretty much bang in the middle, bigger than European and North American spiders, but smaller than African, Asian, and especially South American ones. It's also worth being vigilant about misleading information online as well. Given the persistent and ill-informed expectation that any big spider must be in this country, it's far from a sporadic occurrence to see large spiders from other continents erroneously stated to be in Australia. There's also quite a prevalence of images that make use of camera trickery such as forced perspective, or even blatant editing, to make spiders appear much larger than life. I discuss some of the more commonly shared ones in my video about the viral Australian spider season post. The frequent exaggeration of the size of our spiders is certainly a tiresome and inaccurate trope, but aside from being a potential deterrent to some would-be tourists and a minor annoyance for pedants like myself, it's ultimately pretty benign. Now, let's move on to the next misconception, and one that has done much more harm. Australian spiders are deadly. It is because of this pervasive belief that many people suffer from unnecessary fear, and innumerable spiders are killed as a direct result of this. My own copy of Lord of the Rings still bears a stain from a white-tailed spider I killed as a gullible child who had fallen for the necrotic bite myth. Like the stereotype about Australian spiders being big, the widespread notion that our spiders are dangerous has a slight basis in reality. This country is indeed home to a handful of spider genera that are of medical significance to humans, most notably the members of the family Atracidae, commonly known as the funnel webs, and a couple species have had confirmed human fatalities attributed to their names. So it's not like there aren't spiders in Australia that deserve to be treated with a little respect, though I'll confess that's a smidge hypocritical coming from someone who consistently turns funnel webs into comedy relief characters in almost every upload they're featured in. Where the issue predominantly lies is with the idea that medically significant species constitute a significant enough portion of Australia's spider fauna that they actually pose some sort of ever-present threat, and that approaching or interacting with any spider here is a bit of a gamble. One rather unorthodox but highly relevant example concerns an episode of the popular children's cartoon Peppa Pig. The episode, called Mr Skinny Legs, which also seems like it'd be a perfect title for my autobiography, was pulled from broadcast in Australia, as its message that spiders are small, inoffensive animals was deemed inappropriate for an Australian audience. Needless to say, it didn't take long for the internet to jump on top of this incident, furthering the stereotype that our spiders are so uniquely dangerous that it was unsafe to present them in a non-threatening light for young viewers. Granted, the qualms about the message of the episode are not entirely baseless. It is allegedly stated by one of the characters that spiders can't hurt you, which isn't entirely true. The issue here is that, if one is going to deem such an episode unsuitable for Australian audiences due to the fact that spiders are stated to be harmless, the same could apply practically anywhere as just like their size, the potential for Australian spiders to cause some degree of harm 
is not only greatly exaggerated, but hardly a standout either. Asia and Africa are both home to an array of exceedingly cranky tarantulas, with bites that could give most giant centipedes a serious run for their money, temperaments that may very well make funnel webs seem tame, and a level of speed and mobility that rivals many huntsmen. A large number of tarantulas from the Americas, namely South American ones, can kick fiberglass-like urticating hairs, making them potentially the only spiders on the planet capable of inflicting direct harm without even touching their target, a claim no Australian spiders can make. That's not even getting started on the numerous medically significant and potentially lethal spiders present overseas too, like Phonutria, Sicarius, Hexophthalma, and Loxosceles lita. Of course, please don't take any of the above as fear-mongering. Be they in Australia or anywhere else, the dangers posed by even the minority of spiders that are capable of substantial harm are drastically overstated. It's merely an example of how folly it is that Australia is routinely singled out as the only place where certain spiders may warrant a little caution. Contrary to widespread opinion, medically significant species account for a minuscule portion of Australian spiders. Out of approximately 500 genera present in the country, only about five contain species with bites that may be of concern, and the vast majority of species within that small handful of genera have little overlap with human habitation and are thus of minimal issue. And among our medically significant species, even the heaviest hitters, the funnel webs, fall far short of their reputation. The lethality of their bites is often ridiculously overblown. Funnel web bites are often made out to be a near certain death sentence without prompt and urgent medical treatment. And while any suspected bite from a funnel web should absolutely be regarded as a medical emergency, most bites don't end up requiring antivenom. Indeed, even before the antivenom existed, it was more common than not to survive a funnel web bite. It goes without saying that funnel webs do deserve to be treated with respect, but there's a vast difference between rational, common sense caution and irrational, ignorance rooted hysteria, and unfortunately, it's the latter that appears to be far more common. So, Australian spiders, in spite of their global notoriety, are actually a pretty mediocre bunch. But that doesn't stop them from being a boundless source of fascination for myself and many others. If you want to see some of the more common species that can be found around suburbia, feel free to check out this video here. Or take a look at this video if you'd like to learn about one of the most exotic and spectacular spiders in the country. Thank you all very much for watching and I shall see you again very soon.